give you um, a two minute or less of me. Um, so my name's Carolyn Cribble. I'm CPA's program coordinator. Uh, so what I do, and I know I've met Mary before, um, but what I do is I schedule and coordinate our on-site programs, well, and virtual programs, but um, stuff like exercise, bingo, educational presentations, um, all of those kind of things um, for our six service cities within the commun community centers, but also with COVID on Zoom and all of that. So that's kind of how um, I'm involved with this online dialogue. It was Teresa's idea. And, um, you know, she's the one that put the, put the um, motion in action here, but um, that's kind of how we work together on this. So whichever one of you wants to go first, um, saying who you are, what you do. Okay, Mary, you go ahead. Well, I was gonna ask if you could tell us what programs and things you all have coming up maybe and what's been going on. Okay, yeah. Um, so we're fully back. Um, well, by fully, everything's different two years down the road, right? But um, we are back in person. We're serving hot meals three days a week um, in our various community centers. And then we also still have a once a week frozen meal pickup um, where participants can pick up five frozen entrees with milk and fruit and bread once a week. Um, so that's the nutrition front for programming. Most of our programs. What kind of dog? <laughs> he sounds so scary, doesn't he? <laughs> what kind of dog is it? He's a labrador. Oh, okay. He wants to join on the call too. <laughs> yeah, my pup's out basking in the sun. And mine is upstairs. He's not feeling good. I think he ate something, a sock, something, and I'm hoping that he poops it out. All right, I think he's done now. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I got him like two months ago. And, um, he was my aunt's dog and my aunt passed away in December. So he needed rehomed and we took him. Um, but he was living on a farm. So like suburban life is world of difference. Yeah. <laughs> so I I'm sure it's just a matter of like someone walked by on his sidewalk, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, so um, exercise and other programs you have going on now? Yeah. So most of our programs are back in person. Um, we do have a couple that have stayed virtual um, because we really thought that even post COVID, there would be a desire and need for virtual programming. So we still want to stay a, a little bit in that space as well. But it seems like, and you guys can tell me too, what your experience is, that the older population is still more of the traditional come in, um, in person, on paper kind of um, group. So they didn't make the switch in the past two years. Well, not, cool, not, not voluntarily, I can tell you that, because uh, you know, the, I'm I'm one of the sponsors for the for the Mind Challenge, so okay. I've been to several of the senior centers just in the past uh, two weeks, and they're thrilled to be out there. They don't have a problem being out there. I think in all of the centers that I've been to, I saw less than five wearing masks. Um, there was one that I, I was out on the phone while the program was going on, and she came out because somebody had contacted her because they had been exposed. And she, after the call, she just kind of looked at me, shrugged her shoulders and said, well, there's nothing I can do about it now. So I'm going back in. 
because again, right, she'd already been at the program for an hour. Right. So there wasn't money, anything she could do about it. So I think they're more less affair. Yeah, I'm on this. We're happy to be out. Yeah, we're sponsored too. And the, today I had about 12 or 13 participants in Garfield and my coworker was in Shaker. They only had four, but like old Brooklyn, Brooklyn, they're all building their teams. They're coming back in person. The few things that they did today, they had an exercise program and it was on video, but they come there, but they're watching it on TV. <laughs> and my church is still live streaming, but we're in person, but we still require masks and every other row. See, yeah, my church is back to just everything as normal. Uh, they do still offer, uh, well, once the weather got better, they're doing a 1030 in the morning outdoor for people that aren't. Um, but yeah, you still see some people with masks, but that's all that they're doing. And we have a pretty big parish here. Now, Bedford and Bedford Heights for Mind Challenge is tomorrow. And they sent a notification out that if you're coming there, you are required to have proof of vaccination, either your card or on your phone. Wow, that's wild, because none of the ones I've been to had any of that going on. Me either, none of them. And Phil and Art sent the email out two days ago. They got a um, call or email from Bedford late in the day, and they sent it out late that day, and some people saw it the next morning. So there were a couple of grumbles from the people that were there at Garfield today, but that is the only location that has implemented that policy. Yeah, and I've probably been to at least six or seven of the senior centers myself, and th there's been no policy with them at all. Yep, same thing, yeah. So, yeah, people are going to do what they want to do at this point. Um, people are traveling. But just to see activities back is good. Mm -hmm. It's good for business and people's mental well-being. <laughs> So, Jenny, you want to go first? Because I know you have to jump out. Oh, I should be fine. I'm up golfing, I think, till five today. Uh, anyway, yeah, my name is Jenny Calvi. Uh, my business is healthcarehelp.shop. Um, I've been helping seniors since 1999. I started with Medicare. And as time's gone on, uh, of course, I, I'm your one-stop shop for all your healthcare, whether it be Medicare, uh, any of the products under that, um, travel insurance, uh, under 65, uh, regular health marketplace insurance, short-term care, I mean, you name it, indemnity. I've got pretty much all the products that you could possibly want. Um, the main emphasis, though, behind my business is that I'm all about education. Um, even, when, even at the Mind Challenges, I only spend probably less than 30 seconds talking about who I am and what I do. And then I launch right into some things that are going on that I need that they need to be aware of relative to their health care. Um, there was a new surprise act, uh, no surprise act that was passed recently. And I wanted to make sure that they were familiar with it and exactly how it impacts them. Um, I will be building on that when the actual, because the work that's been done so far in these senior centers has been, they've been practicing to get ready for the actual competitions. The actual competitions um, for my senior centers anyway, start next week. Um, at those, um, again, I've already got my whole spiel wet up, how I'm moving on and how the other changes have impacted, um, specifically that wellness programs um, have, tra have transposed over um, your physicals. You no longer get physicals anymore. They're called wellness visits. Well, what's the difference between a physical and a wellness visit? You gotta pay for your labs. And then I talk about there's three different types of insurance. If you've got the F plan with original Medicare, you're not impacted at all. Relax, sit back, don't panic. If you have the G plan, you're just going to meet your deductible earlier. Why? Because those costs are celibate. If you have the Advantage plan, you're the ones that are impacted because it's the lab fees. You know what I mean? So basically, and that's kind of where I'm going. Um, colonoscopies have changed. There's two different. There's actually two different codes. Mam mammograms. Two different codes. You could be billed for one. And again, if you get a bill and you're supposed to be under preventative, that's supposed to still be covered. So you call and you question that. So I feel like instead, of, I don't sell insurance. I'm more of an advocate for healthcare and how you 
navigate it. Because again, ever since Obamacare, they're just finding more and more creative ways to bill us the consumer. And we have to know how to counteract that. We have to understand who our networks are. It's all about network to now. I don't care what your insurance is, under 65, all the way through Medicare. Got to know your networks. So in a nutshell, that's who I am. I'm the advocate for the person in dealing with your health care. I don't know if I was over, around, or short of two minutes. I didn't pay attention. I didn't time it. <laughs> yeah, Jenny, you said you have to know your network, right? Absolutely. That's that's paramount. And you know, networks go all the way down to urgent cares. I'm on the marketplace. When I when I was out walking the dog the one day, he went after another dog, which I thought they went across the street. Instead, they just went in the street and it was too close. So my dog wanted to go over and play. Well, I wasn't ready for it. I face planted right in the street. I came home, I was gonna to go to the urgent care. I live in Menor. Do you know where my closest network urgent care is? Beachwood, Beachwood, you... really? So That's... again, it goes all the way down to that. It would have cost me an arm and a leg to go to the urgent care here. Wow. I grabbed, I grabbed the thing of frozen vegetables, put it on my face and told my husband, take off your coat. We're not going anywhere. I'll live with another scar at this stage of my life. Wow. Yeah, um, my good friend Krista at Western Reserve, she always makes the comment at the end of her speech, knowledge is power. And most people would have just rode mm -hmm. to the nearest location and got hit with a bill that would have caused them a concussion. Well, you know what, what other people don't realize is if your doctor sends you to the lab, just because it's in the same building doesn't mean it's in your network, even if your doctor is. That's so now all of a sudden you're paying higher costs there. Or if they're affiliated with a hospital, you're going to pay more at a hospital than you are at a regular lab. So it's it's so important because it's going to cost it's going to cost you the consumer. Bottom line. Yeah, and I've been really bad about reading any of my fine print on the explanation until I start getting collection letters, and I'm like, but that's supposed to be covered. Now I got to go back and try to figure out. Mm -hmm. code this code that and so i just write them a note and send it back i'm like no this is fully covered you figure it out <laughs> well in, in all honesty the best bet for you to do is to call the people that build you and ask them why they are billing you because you need to find out what the what the code is that they did use so that you have an arguable and then you call the, the provider where you're at and say why was this billed this way I had that problem with mammograms two years ago, and that's exactly what happened. I had breast cancer in 2001. I was told back then that I was covered for mammograms for the rest of my life. They billed it two years ago. I got a bill for $150 for a mammogram because they billed it as diagnostic instead of preventative. Oh. So when I called, they said, well, the insurance company said, well, we don't pay on the diagnostic. We only pay on the preventative. You, It's your responsibility to pay. So then I called the doctor's office. I said, look, either get out there and change the code so the insurance is going to pay for it. I said, or send it to collection. I said, because I'm not going to. But all of us that sit back and just pay those bills, that's why we have so many of them. Yeah. Yeah, my dentist did that. And I'm like, and they, and they recognized it was something in the coding. So yes, typically that's what it is. It's all about the codes. And if you are a breast cancer survivor, I'm going to tell you right now, there is no such thing as preventative. You are always looking for that cancer to come back. So therefore you are being discriminated against because you're always looking to see, is it back? Plain and simple. So it's always diagnostic in my head. Yeah. And, and that's something really good to know. There, there needs to be a little cheat sheet when you leave the doctor's office, the do's and don'ts. And, you know, because. People spend so much money on medical and that's, yeah. Can't survive. Now you have to buy eggs and pay for a doctor bill. <laughs> nope. Or your Why? prescriptions. Don't even get me started on prescriptions. <laughs> <laughs> I just, that's I'm, a real hot button for me. <laughs> your eyes. Oh, well, I was uh. on the notes and I've been around Jenny forever, but I didn't know some of those things. Well, that's why, like I said, so when I get in front of somebody, it's all about the education to me because there are so many things out there people don't know. One of the things that was addressed, and this is the one of the things that I was talking about, was the no surprise bill. The no surprise bill was put into place 
to protect you from out of network costs. Now, a, a, under that, if you have to get a procedure done and they're a non-network provider, they are required to give you notice of who around you is in your network. If it's something that's going to be done in the future, they have 72 hours that they cannot schedule any of that. If it's something that's supposed to be done the same day, they have three hours. Now, as we know, the providers aren't going to put up with it because, again, everybody's paying more under Obamacare. I get it. So they come up with a creative solution. Well, do you know what the solution is? Well, you're going to love this one. It's called they give you a waiver. They ask you to sign a waiver. Now, the waiver protects the provider. You sign the waiver, you're saying, yes, go ahead, charge me out of network. But waiver, doesn't that sound like it's something that's for you? Yeah. And it's not. So that was, the, that was my message to every group that I met for the first time at the senior centers. I said, you don't have to remember the name of the bill. You don't even have to remember the name of the waiver. I said, if they're talking about out of network or anything to do with network and they want you to sign a waiver, just say no. It's not for you. It's not going to help you. Wow. Right? <laughs> yeah, that could be a whole day seminar. I got a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Now I'll be giving my notes to my mother because she is at the doctor like every third week or something for something. And my sister is dealing with something with cancer. So she probably just signs her name to everything just because they said sign your name. She probably just keeps writing. She never looks at anything. So. Well, that's a shame because again, you're being taken advantage of at that point because yeah. anyone that's dealing with cancer, they're the last thing on their mind are the bills the accounting, anything. Yep. I know. I've been there. You're, yep. They're only they're only hearing every third word out of the doctor's mouth, much less anything to do with billing. Yeah. All she heard was it may be back, and I got to do a biopsy. That's all. She, that's the only content that I got from her. So, yeah. But I try to look at stuff when I can. But that's a whole job. <laughs> that's a whole job. It so can thanks. be. Thanks. Got some notes now. All right, so everybody, I am Mary Norris Pack, the manager for community engagement with the Benjamin Rose Institute on Aging. So a couple updates for us is we have our Rose Centers, Rose Centers for Aging Well, we have six. Well, we just partnered with Fairhill Partners, so that takes us to seven. Uh, we don't have our own staff there, but you can receive a congregate meal there now. So that's an update as of yesterday that I was made aware of. And we're going to start having roles on the go. So in University Heights, Cleveland Heights, there's no road center there or a facility that Benjamin Rose facilitates. So they're going to take those programs and services really on the road into communities that don't have a center. And part of that reason is they're looking for the people that are afraid to go to a senior center because they're not that old. <laughs> they don't want to be stereotyped that they're old to going to a senior center. Um, so we're going to be doing something with the gathering place. And um, I believe somewhere up in Shaker, because it's not called a senior center, it's called a community center. <laughs> so we'll be expanding that. And we're changing how we talk about our subsidiary companies. We're going to be pretty much saying we have programs and services all offered through um, Benjamin Rose Institute on Aging. Because when you say all the names of the entities, people get confused. They're like, oh, you have ESOP, you have the Rose Centers, you have Branches, which is our realty company, and then Margaret Wagner Apartments. So hot off the press that it hasn't been a press release yet. We found out yesterday, late morning, that our Margaret Wagner Apartments, which are on Euclid Heights Boulevard, have been awarded a grant um, in conjunction with CHN to renovate those apartments that have not been renovated ever <laughs> and to expand to 20 more units. That is something like earth moving for the organization. Um, it took the finance department, it took a team of uh, lawyers, 
it took collaboration with CHN and a lot of, lot of grant writing um, to get this pulled off. So yesterday was the fingers crossed day and we got words. I didn't hear any champagne popping, but some celebration is coming. Um, and the, the residents that are there, they don't have space to move them somewhere else while the renovations are happening. So that's the logistics they have to figure out. And then you can imagine 20 of the current residents want to go to the new development <laughs> once that gets done. Um, so we're super excited about that. Some other good things that are happening. I'm the only outreach manager. I'm a team of one, but now I have a team called Brand Ambassadors. They're representation of every department in the organization. And they will, um, beginning next week, as they can with their schedules, come to me, come with me to events so they can see what outreach really looks like and then be a little more um, intentional about some programs that they have to offer that they can speak to better than I can. Especially the research department, because they're always looking for more participants at a deeper level than what I'm talking about. And we have a volunteer manager for our manager. She's gonna manage um, the intake calls for volunteers for wellness calls or for drivers. So I know um, she will be joining me as well, looking to build our volunteer base. So those are just a couple really, really um, high level, exciting things for the organization outside of behavioral health services. Um, cyber crimes are really big right now at Maple, no Garfield Heights today, there was a guy that told me about a scam that he had just got hit with. Um, a friend of mine's daughter is moving in Texas. So the father got a phone call and he thought it was legit because they were looking for references because his daughter is moving. But he texted her and said, call me. She ignored his text because people are busy. She gave them her credit card and got hit for $400 of fraud. The good thing is she used her credit card, so that's covered and not her checking account, even though it would have been covered, it just takes longer to get your money back versus a credit card. Um, so the scam squad is really looking to build out more of the scam -o game that the senior centers and any other community groups could use to help educate the residents on scams. Because everyone is buying a grandmother or an auntie a tablet or some kind of electronic device for telehealth and Facebook, and then they start clicking on all these things and get roped in. The romance scams. If Fox the Eight had something on two or three days ago that a lady shared her story of how she got scammed in a romance scam. So we laugh about it when we talk about it, but those things are real. So we'd like to be more involved in, sure, it's good to get a person a device, get them the internet at a discount, show them how to use it, but then show them how to be safe and using that device. So we are building out some programs on that in conjunction with the scam squad um, of Cuyahoga County. So a lot of good reasons for me to come to the center and, and talk to the seniors about some topics that maybe have been refreshed and some things that are new and upcoming. So I thank you for the time. Yeah, thank you. And it, it's funny you talk about scammo. We we have a scammo um, presentation and game coming up at the end of June um, at one of our sites. But yeah, I, I keep hearing more and more scams and I don't know if it's just that we're hearing about them more or if there really is more scams. Both. Well, we Both. had a speaker at ASNI that, that referred to that in particular and they're Many of them, the romance one and a few of the other ones have been around forever. But yeah, they get more and more clever. So yeah, there's more and more ones that are coming up. Yeah, it's the digital world. They're just finding opportunities to take our whatever they can. Oh, I got a delivery. I got to go to my door. <laughs> Did you want to talk about the technology thing? Wasn't that was supposed to be the, the topic for today? Yeah, so I, I have the um, conversation starter. Um, 
but also so mary was talking about the um the like protecting older adults with their devices and all of that and we have a big tech initiative at cpa um called cpa connects where we're actually giving uh participants refurbished chromebooks and um it's it is one thing to show them how to use the device, but then I, I would agree that that second part of like how to safely use your device has to come in there. And we're, we're not quite there, but we're aware of that. And we need to add that in with, um, you know, giving people the device, showing them how to use it, but also protecting them. So, yeah. Anyways, the prompt for today was what have you learned from children or young people that has helped you age successfully? Well, one of the things I know myself, um, um, I got married late, so I had children late. So when my children were born, one of the reasons I had to get involved with the internet was because I needed to stay in front of them. I needed to know how to protect them from the internet. So I had to learn how to use it. And that has certainly worked for me because the technology that we now use, I'm, I'm an old hat at it. I've been doing it since the beginning. I embraced um, the virtual world in um, applications, you know, being able to do them on doing it, do them online, uh, being able to meet people online, that type of a thing. So just by, that's what my kids taught me. My kids taught me that um, they've saved me a lot of money. My, my, one, my one daughter taught me that, you know, a Amazon Prime, look at the reviews. You know, you, this is a digital world and you are getting product from all over the world. And a lot of that stuff out there is scams. So that's huge. Look at reviews. It never occurred to me before. I, I believe that, you know, you look online that something's believable. You have to look beyond it. You actually have to read through some of those things. Some of them are manufactured. Who would have thought? So again, the younger generation grew up with all of this. Um, I have a daughter right now that she, currently she just uh, she just left Turkey. Uh, she was in three other countries before that. And now she's in Thailand for the next three weeks. And she's got three more countries she's going to. You know, their outlook on life is that everything is their backyard. She asked me, she says, mom, why don't you come visit me in Vietnam? I said, honey, I lived through a war in Vietnam. Why would I want to go to Vietnam? <laughs> I saw people that came back from there that had lost limbs, that were, were exposed to dangerous chemicals. I said, in my mind, there is no way that that would be on the top of my list to go to. But to the younger generation, she's going to Vietnam. She's going to backpack. She's a 23-year-old girl going around the world by herself. Their outlook is so refreshing because again, they think nothing of it. They have no fear. We, we're, you know, we're products of our, you know, of our environment just as they are. So they grew up with all of this. They're so they're worlds ahead of us, and they have so much to teach us. And they're the ones that could help us with some of the security stuff because they've already figured it out. Not just how to get around it, but how to protect themselves from it. She found out just to travel alone, she told me. Who would have thought? Now she can get a SIM card that goes all over the world. She doesn't have to get one for each individual country. You know, stuff like that. I mean, I have no clue. They, they think nothing of going on their phone and looking something up. So they have the world literally and all of its resources and everything at their fingertips. The generation ahead of us, not a clue, most of them. I'm learning it only because I'm exposed to my kids. So one of the programs that I think was always beneficial, even when my kids were growing up, was they put younger people with older people. So you do like a community thing, um, whether it be with a high school or college, you know, something along that line. At, back then, um, they used to do preschool. Why? Because in a lot of ways, the older generation had regressed and they were more the preschool. You know, they loved the cartoons and the, the old shows and you know, they could relate. But even today, I think one of the things that all the centers could benefit from, and I think the kids could benefit from, from a respect standpoint, point, 
is to, to initiate some type of a program with young people. You know, a lot of them, I walk the dog in the morning. When I walk by the, the bus stop up here, do you know there's kids stand on like three, there's like five kids. They all stand apart from each other. So in middle school, they're already pulling apart. Well, when does that ever get back together? So they don't, they're already isolating themselves to a certain extent. So I think I would love to see some type of programs initiated with the seniors that brings the kids in and have them interact because they each have so much to learn from each other. So I think this today's topic was a phenomenal, just the technology I know I've gotten from, but I think that there could be a lot more out there that could be explored with by putting those partnerships together. You know, they have big brother, big little sister. Well, yeah. how about adopt a senior? I think they, they, they would learn so much from all of that. There was a movie that my husband likes to watch movies and there was a movie on that he watched and it was all about a girl that was doing some type of a story and she misrepresented herself and she shows up and it's not the guy because he misrepresented himself and all the interactions, the way the movie goes, I can't think of the title of it, but anyway, the grandmother of the families, you know, says, you know what, you kids met online. Now they don't know that it wasn't ideal anymore. Um, so they brought them to the senior center and the senior centers wanted to do online dating. All the interactions between the kids was a riot. But again, I still I think there's a there's a kernel in there that could that could be exploited to the betterment of everybody. Yeah, my church, we have a community garden space, and it's for anyone in the neighborhood. And this was in 2011 we first started. And I remember 2011 because I was going through a divorce. <laughs> And the garden was my therapy, was much cheaper. And all the older people, they just couldn't wait to tell me all the things, how they garden back in the day. But I learned so much without having to waste time trying to figure it out. And then St. Martin de Porres, the students from John Carroll in the past have come over to play board games with the seniors. And I had a lady who had got a phone, but she didn't know how to use it. All she knew how to do was make a phone call. And I said, what if the next time your grandchild comes and you take that time, because the grandkids, they come in and they do this, hold, hi grandma or hi grandpa. And then they go sit in the corner and they play on their phone for the next hour. Mm -hmm. What if you have your phone and have that child help you do a Facebook account, find some of your relatives, put take selfies and put a picture on that phone and a couple of them did it, and they said that in all their time of the kids coming to visit, it's five and out, five and out, that they had hours on hours of time just because of that darn telephone, because that's something that the kids gravitate to, mm -hmm. and granny has no concept whatsoever. And I did it with my mom. I'm an Android user, but everyone else in my family has an iPhone. So I got her an iPhone and out of her seven grandkids, I think seven of them have had to help her with her phone. And I told them, I said, well, I got her iPhone because you all have iPhones and no matter which one of you stop by, you can help her. So she has a picture of her, her mother on the face of it. She has a picture of her, my dad on there who's deceased. She has her icons on the top because they can take the time and they just say, get, just give it here. And now they're stuck over there for an hour. And the next thing you know, they're cutting up vegetables together so she can put them in the freezer. <laughs> so yeah, Jimmy. Exactly. I mean, those things, you know, we had dinner as a family growing up. Now these kids, it's, nobody has dinner together. They just- Or if they do, they're all on their phones. Yeah, we have a no phone rule. Um, when we have our time. And if we go to a restaurant with my one older cousin, she makes everyone put their phone in the middle of the table. So you can't sneak under the table. And we learn about traditions. We learn about health and wellness. You know, my daughter has lupus that's always in remission. I had no idea that it was somebody in my, my ex-husband's family that had it because people don't communicate. And I said, you know, you need to come home and have real conversations. So when I come to events, I always come home and ask my kids, do you know how to do this? Have you heard of this? Um, 
this is something that your friends can use. And even with the elections and politics, have conversations, and but they will challenge you. They'll get that phone and challenge you in a heartbeat. <laughs> I'm like, someone posted- well, they're on experts, aren't they? Yeah, someone posted on Facebook, um, a picture of an encyclopedia that says this was our internet back in the day. <laughs> Britannica encyclopedia set. <laughs> if you gave a kid one of those, they would go, what in tarnation is that? <laughs> like they don't want books on paper. I love going to the bookstore. I need a book in my hand. I want to fill the pages. Now, older people use their Bibles. Young people use the app on their phone. Yep. So... Yeah, I think there's great value in that intergenerational coming together. And the senior centers are good places as well as churches to bring those together, especially in the summertime. Most of the older adults have their grandkids anyway. They're babysitters. They're babysitters. So good topic, good topic. You could probably talk to and have all kinds of ways. Like I look at Annie O'Neill. Um, I learned so much from her just talking on some of the things as an advocate for older adults and some of the other ladies that probably are retired nurses, but still want to stay engaged. And some of the things that they're finding in their patients or their clients. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is going to be me. <laughs> you know, I need to have a notebook and just start tooling information because my mother is not getting any younger and neither is her health. So. I have to rely on the folks like a Jenny and an Annie that know all this information and I can always pick up the phone and call them because Google don't have everything. Google can give you just the the bones of it, but not a scenario or other options in my mind. Well, and here's the other thing that I learned from kids. You want to talk about the Google. I have a daughter when she was down at Ohio State, she attended a Black Matters rally. The mm -hmm. police overreacted, shot into the crowd. She got hit. She got hit in the face with a wooden bullet, which released uh, tear gas. It was oh. a horrible, horrible thing. Oh. Well, what, she, what I learned from that was she started Googling other things. When you start Googling, Google sends you what you're looking for. So as soon as she had attended that, because she was injured from it, Every other bad thing that was going on back then was all coming to her news feed. You oh. start looking at something and now all of a sudden that you, you might as well be living in Russia, what, you know, back in the seventies, because yeah. that's everything that comes to you. You couldn't talk to her about the other side or about how, you know, police, you know, things happen to them too. Because again, everything came to her phone. So all it did was reinforce one mindset. Now that's a little scary, don't you think? And yeah. that needs to be addressed too, because when it comes to it, that's what the Google Analytics have done for us. They give you what you want or what you think you want or something that you looked at. They can be slanted. Yeah. And you need to be prepared for that. That's yeah. what I learned from that whole thing with her. Yeah. All of a sudden she was slanted toward all of it. Me personally, I think all lives matter. I don't have a problem with black lives mattering. I don't have a problem with anybody. I don't have a problem with the police per se. I mm -hmm. don't like injustice against anybody. And I'm a big believer in sportsmanship, mm -hmm. but I think people need a level playing field. And yeah. that's what the problem that we're running in with this technology is you put in something out there, you start, you know, Googling something, you get only one side. It's not balanced. So there's some I'm issues with the technology that. in that regard, I think as well. Yeah, because the old dictionary would give you a synonym, you know, and then right. <laughs> this stuff does not. So uh, I'll I'll chime in a little bit here. So my background is in marketing, and so I so I and it, it's hard for me to talk sometimes about aging. Although I've been working with CPA for five and a half years, you know, I'm relatively young. So talking about growing up with technology and all that. I mean, that was me, right? But um, what I was going to say is 
having a degree in marketing, I actually learned about that whole thing of like Google tailoring the ads you see and all, all of oh, that. Oh, I'll bet you did. <laughs> it's, it, it's, um, it's interesting and it's cool. And it's also scary. I, I will say both of those things because basically what Google and Facebook and, you know, all of these, um, digital giants are doing is they're creating a profile of who you are. And based on you liking that cute cat video, you're going to see 10 more cute cat videos. So I, I completely, um, I completely agree with what you're saying. And it's, it's very hard when there is such controversial issues happening in the world, I think to get both sides of, um, you, you know, and to make an educated, uh, educated thought or when you're going to vote or an educated real idea of the reality of something when all you're what you're looking for is a balanced approach a balanced because approach you're, 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 right more balance is what we need because i mean it, you're absolutely right the the first time that you look into something on one side of the playing field you're going to continue to see more of what you just looked for and so it reinforces whatever you looked for it, it is hard. And I know that these websites, I, I know, for instance, Facebook has, um, has started doing this thing, fact checking, you know, which, which is helpful, but like it, it and, and there is legislated legislature, I know in the works of, of taking out media bias, but how do you do that when that's what these websites were really created on deep down, you know? So it's scary. It's big brother all over again. <laughs> it, it's such a deep issue. It really is. Well, it, it, it is. That's what it comes down to. And it's funny because you got the whole world in on it now. <laughs> Your audience is just bigger. <laughs> I know. I, I did a presentation a month or so ago on Alexa and um, oh I'm working I'm working at home and um, right now, and I, I'm looking across the room. I, I'm just waiting for her to chime in. But um, but it, people had all these questions, you know, isn't she listening in on my private conversations and X, Y, and Z? And so, so here's the thing about technology, right? Like it has improved our lives in so many ways and it's really improved how we can get information quickly and we, we have everything at our fingertips, but it's also um, invaded a level of our lives where um, our lives were more private in the past and now they really are public. And it's, it, it is a balance, just like Jenny was saying that like, do the pros outweigh the cons? I don't know. Well, I think like anything, you just have to continually monitor things. Mm -hmm. And you have to have the ability to do it and you have to have some uh, regulator somewhere along the line. Now, the regulations can be narrow or the regulations can be broad. But again, as long as there's some type of regulation and allowance for difference of opinion, one hopes that there would be balance. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's kind of where we're headed, I would think. I, I wonder though, so like I, how I just said, you know, I'm on the younger side of things growing up with technology, but like, I still, I still remember not having all this technology too. You know, like when I was a kid, my, my house growing up had one chunky computer that sat in the kitchen, you know, I didn't have a laptop growing up. So I, I remember before everything was so invasive though too. I wonder kids growing up now, if they're gonna have the same level of discernment on what to share when and you know how publicly. Well, well I think there's already issues about that anyway. 
Um, there's bullying, you know, cyber bullying. I mean, there's all yeah. kinds of stuff. It, it's another medium mm-hmm. is really all it is. Because I can remember, because you talk about the big clunky computer. I remember that. Because mm-hmm. my kids were really little at the time. And I remember I made it a point never to put their pictures on there mm-hmm. because I was worried about the privacy angle. I didn't want anybody to know how cute my kids were and have anybody come looking for my kids. And that's mm-hmm. how I feel about it. I have one daughter that hardly ever posts and I have another one that does selfies all the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there, there's, there's, there's going to be differences there as well, because it's, some of it's going to be the personality, you know, whether or not you're posting it, that type mm-hmm. of a thing. But the privacy is going to be huge. You're absolutely correct. It already is to a certain extent. Yeah. There's a privacy. They, 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 they show it all. They tell it all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I tweet it all. Yeah. I had done this part time. And yesterday I had two young guys shopping around in the polo section. And the one guy, he had his phone. And he was like, man, this is hard. This is hard. And I'm, I'm head that. It's a nice looking lady and they've seen her and maybe she does something that, you know, is not a normal job because that's how engrossing his phone he was. Fast forward because his friend tried on something and he was like, man, and he was smiling the whole time. I was like, oh, you must be having some good news. He goes, no, the opposite. He hadn't been on Instagram in a while and he turned it back on and he turned it back on and he started saying he was hanging out with his boy at the mall. This young lady came to the mall to find him, found him in the parking lot because he's sharing his location and all that to tell him that he has a two-year-old daughter. I said, you just now found out. He goes, just a few minutes ago. Like now he goes, because I turned my Instagram back on. I was like, so you didn't think that it was a possibility you have a kid? He goes, no. And I had not been on social media. Or da, 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 da. I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. That is wild. Colin Maury, right? Yeah. And I said, oh, he goes, now I got to do this DNA thing. And I'm like, well, do you think the child is yours? And he, resembl- he goes, yeah, she got my eyes. She got my forehead. She got my nose. Oh my God. And he just went on a whole tangent for the next 10 minutes. And I know his whole life story in 10 minutes. <laughs> it's wild. There's a couple good documentaries about like this whole growing up with technology. One of them's called Generation Like on PBS. And I don't remember the other one, but it's wild. And I feel so fortunate to have been born before some of this because like I said I remember I remember the good old days before this but you know I mean I I can't imagine I I I really kind of feel sorry for some of our youth because it's like I cannot imagine going through middle school and high school and all the all the drama in being a teenager and also have to worry about TikTok and Snapchat and you know, the cyber bullying, it's just, it, it's a wild time. <laughs> I agree. My kids are 22 and 32. And if I had to have children young in this, I, I don't even know how I would make it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't have kids. I don't know if I will, but it's, uh, you know, it, this whole COVID thing too, with parents having to homeschool, like I, it's a, it's trying times. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's trying times. Oh yeah. My friends that are teachers are ready to retire. <laughs> For sure. Well, I guess we kind of got off on a tangent a little bit. Does anyone have any um, final thoughts about, you know, aging aging successfully um with uh you know things you learn from young people nothing no, stay- i think we addressed a lot of that because we talked about how technology and the differences brought us to where we are mm-hmm. i mean yes are there i mean yes there are positive things and we talked about some of that but we also addressed some of the negatives so i think actually we had quite a bit of balance actually in there yeah. Um, 
And the fact that I think, it, you know, again, my recommendation to your senior centers would be, and Mary proved that one was already working, is to, to make more of a collaborative effort mm -hmm. between the generations. So, I mean, I think we started there. I think, I just think we evolved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And watch yeah. the intern, the, they should play that movie, The Intern. I love that movie. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Oh, Anne Hathaway and Robert De Niro. Okay. I'm she, writing it down. She's a young, aspiring um, business owner. And he actually started his career in that same building 100 million years ago. And he's an old retired guy. And what he wears for the interview versus everyone else. and the time he gets to work versus everyone else. And they really want to get rid of him because he's old, but what she learns from him is just moving. I love Anne Hathaway anyway, but that movie, my boyfriend hadn't seen it before and we watched it one day um, and it was crazy. Benjamin Rose had that movie at their Young Professionals movie night right before the pandemic. Well, the first year of the pandemic, Out on the Lawn, that was the movie and the crowd was such a mix. It was the young professionals, which are your age and a little bit above, and then the staff, and then some parents, some grandparents, you know, just wanted to come support. And he watched the whole thing like he barely moved off his chair. I think it's a really good example of that intergenerational locking in. It was an excellent um, movie for them to have as a first time. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, you'll be you'll be floored. I'd love for you to tell me after you watch it what you thought. Okay. Will do. So we'll um, have plenty of ideas for the senior centers now, Jenny. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you both for coming on and chatting. Um, yeah. Thank you for hosting. Yes. yes. And we'll be in touch soon. Oh, sooner than later. I didn't know you had a marketing degree. <laughs> yeah. We're going to put you to use. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you. See you next time. All right. Thank you. You have a great day. Have you fun. Too. And Jenny, I'm getting out of my work clothes now. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All At right. Least the weather is going to be nicer. Yes. All right. Bye now. Bye.